Hello people, in this video let us look at aortic stenosis. <clears throat> so the topic is aortic stenosis. So what is aorta and what is stenosis? So from the left ventricle, the oxygenated blood comes out via your aorta, right? So here you have the aortic valve. So when this is valve is stenosed, that time it is called as aortic valve stenosis or aortic stenosis. So stenosis means what? Narrowing. So when narrowing of aortic valve okay so when there uh, there is aortic stenosis you can just call it as 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 is aortic stenosis so why will there be aortic stenosis so usually people in young young people okay so this is a baby so in young people it can be congenital so congenital aortic stenosis this is the most common valvular lesion they are seeing so aortic stenosis can be there and in old people right very old people in these people, it can be degenerative, um, uh, uh, that is senile calcific aortic stenosis can be there. Okay, so in this one, it is congenital. So here, instead of having uh, tricuspid, you know, it should be tricuspid, right? Instead of that, it could be bicuspid or unicuspid um, valve. So it would be narrow, right? And in old people, it can be because of degeneration, senile calcification. It can there can be calcification also. Okay, there can be atherosclerotic aortic stenosis etc okay so atherosclerosis degeneration calcification all that you blame here and in uh, young people you will say turner syndrome or uh, congenital valvular lesion instead of tricuspid it could be bicuspid etc look at one more thing here rheumatic aortic stenosis so this one whenever it is there it can uh, be in addition with aortic stenosis these people can have mitral valve involvement also mitral valve involvement also can be there okay so, uh, what are you looking at guys? So, we are looking at what? Aortic stenosis. So, we saw it can be congenital or it can be in very old people, right? And whenever, uh, if it is because of rheumatic causes, then most commonly you will have mitral valve. Mitral valve is the most prone, right? Along with that, you can have this aortic stenosis, okay? Now, let's move on to what the symptoms will be there in these people, whoever have aortic stenosis. So, basically, they will have sad syncope dyspnea angina. So, basically, if they have angina, okay, one level. Syncope, if they have, then one more level. Dyspnea, if they have then it is very, uh, uh, the prognosis will be poor, okay. So, what is um, angina, chest pain, uh, discomfort, syncope will be like uh, fainting episodes, right. Dyspnea will be difficulty to breathe, right. So, basically what is happening in these people, then only you will know, right, uh, why these symptoms, right. So, basically what is happening, The this is stenosed, right. So, if this is stenosed, what will happen, there will be more pressure here. So, if there is more pressure here, there can be pulmonary edema, right. So, pulmonary edema, this person will have dyspnea. He'll have less output, let's say, so he has uh, uh, chest pain, angina, he has discomfort, he has. Then what was the other one we saw? Syncope. He has fainting episodes. Okay. So that is very important. On exertion, he has syncope. These people can go into sudden death, guys. They can have, uh, com uh, you know, atrial tachyarrhythmia, okay, or uh, complete heart block. So they can go into sudden death. So, how will these people present to you guys? So, they will, um, how will they present to you? We already told you they will have dyspnea, uh, syncope and uh, what is the other one? S-A-D. A is what? Angina. Yeah. So, signs here, what will you elicit from those people? You will see that the pulse, the pulse is slow rising, small volume pulse, delayed peak. This is called as pulses parvus or tardis. So, pulse is very slow rising, small volume. You can understand from the iota, the blood is not coming easily. So, there is slow rising, small volume pulse, isn't it? So, there is stenosis here. So, the pulse, whatever you feel, will be slow rising and delayed peak, right? And then what else are they saying here? Because of the stenosis, the apex beat. So, you will have heaving apex. So, heaving apex beat, okay? So, it, when uh, this is the apex, right? So, you will have a heaving apex beat here. So, look at this image here, guys. So, here, what are you seeing? S1, S2. So, S1 is because the mitral valve and tricuspid will close and S2 is because of aortic and pulmonary closing, right? So, what is the effect of the stenosis? So, when the aortic valve opens, right, when it opens, it is still narrow. So, the blood will have to flow through this narrow opening. So, when do you think you will hear anything? So, look at this photo here. So, after the S1, you have the ejection click where the aortic valve will open, right? So, here when you see in the aortic stenosis, the murmur will be ejection systolic murmur during the systole of the heart, which you can see. When the 
aortic valve opens because of the narrowing you will see this systolic murmur so this is ejection systolic murmur ejection systolic murmur okay see as it's increasing and decreasing they seem to also call it as crescendo decrescendo uh, okay so what else you're noticing here the ejection click here can be early so it can sometimes overlap with the s1 okay and what else are you seeing here there could be an s4 okay there could be a fourth heart sound here what happens because the aorta uh, uh, aortic valve is stenosed it will close later so here yeah so here in s2 you had a2 and p2 right here you had a2 and p2 let me use a better color weight so in s2 what do you have guys in s2 you have two parts a2 and p2 okay so in s2 you have a2 and p2 now that the blood is going very slowly the aortic uh, valve will close later so the aortic closure will be a little more late right so this s2 will have a narrow split right so it can happen that a2 is late so a2 p2 the difference between these two will be small so it will be a narrow split s2 okay it can also happen that a2 goes beyond p2 when a2 goes beyond p2 that that will be called as reverse split so did you understand guys so, so how will you represent um, the sign that you see what sign is this in heart sounds so remember to draw this diagram you have s1 here and then here you have s2 which they have split as a2 and p2 right so here you will show that there is an ejection syst uh, systolic murmur that is a uh, which is in systole right so systolic murmur you have and then what else will you see here that there can be narrow splitting of s2 or there can be reverse splitting of s2 okay and whatever here you have the ejection click it can be earlier so that is what they are saying here wait so what are they saying here same thing s4 may be heard ejection click will be there loud one it can be early but this disappears on calcification so if there's calcification of the aortic valve this will disappear this is something you have to remember about the ejection click ejection systolic murmur will be there which we already told you okay then what else look at this guy so here you have the aorta right so let us say this is how it is coming this is the aorta from here what are you getting here you are getting the what is this this is the common carotid so as simple as this carotid thrill where will you get carotid thrill or a shudder if they call it you will see it in aortic stenosis okay so here whenever they are saying carotid thrill shudder you can understand where will you see it in carotid thrill where will you see where will you see carotid thrill aortic stenosis very good listen to the normal heart sounds and this is aortic stenosis so now we are done with the symptoms and signs okay so now let's look at the severity severity how will you say so basically um, according to the valve area based on how narrow it is right so basically you will have to do an echo for it you will have to see normal valve area will be around 3 to 4 cm square in stenosis it will be less than severe stenosis it will be less than 0.75 cm square per meter square of body surface area they are actually calculating it at on the basis of body surface area you can focus here it's not simply a measurement and actually they are saying sometimes they're saying it is less than 0.6 okay 0.6 they are saying 0.6 cm square per meter square of body surface area okay so what else they are saying here um, there are other ways of telling if it is severe or not see normal gradient 0 mm mercury severe aortic stenosis greater than 40 mm mercury okay so this is severe aortic stenosis the gradient what gradient is this it is across the aortic valve so what is there here left ventricle and here you will have the aorta so across this the gradient if it is greater than 40 mm square uh, sorry 40 mm mercury so the pressure is so high then it is severe aortic stenosis okay So, what are the complications in these people, uh, guys? So, if they have an aortic stenosis, what can happen? Uh, there will be left ventricular failure. There can be arrhythmias, which can include sudden death. So, we already told you in uh, in aortic stenosis, there can be sudden death, isn't it? There can be a complete heart block, heart block. There can be infective endocarditis. Uh, 
because all these valves are affected when these valves are affected they can they are prone to infection infective endocarditis can happen so what will be the investigation that you will do guys in these people so you will have to do an ecg so as simple as that right ecg you will do what will you see in ecg you will see that there is left ventricular hypertrophy which they have already shown in this photo so if there is a stenosis of this aortic valve what will happen left ventricular hypertrophy will be there very uh, easily you can un understand that left ventricular hypertrophy and then you will see some strain pattern let's look at the ecg so here you are seeing that in v1 there is deep s and in v5 they are saying there is tall r okay so these are some uh, things that they are telling v1 will have deep s v5 has tall r so these will indicate to you that there is left ventricular hypertrophy and what is the strain pattern basically they are saying that uh, oxygen demand of the heart is more it's hypertrophied right so there can be a t wave inversion so this is this will be your lv strain pattern okay then chest x ray in chest x ray what will you see guys so basically you will see that the heart is big the left ventricle is hypertrophied obviously you will see that it it can also happen that even left atria is slightly um, uh, hypertrophied right then what will you see here you will see that um, there can be calcification right of the aortic valve we told you that they are in senile it can lead to calcification that you can see better in ct chest okay so that what they are talking about fluoroscopy is it okay that is x ray mostly okay then coming to uh, echocardiogram what will you see in an echo you can see calcified valve same things they are talking about hypertrophied left ventricle is the same thing right that's what they are telling here then what else uh, they are telling as investigation coronary angiogram so basically to rule out coronary artery disease especially in old people so only it is indicated only if people are old older than 45 they can also have a, a coronary artery disease okay so that's why they will have angina if they have angina so what is the prognosis of these people if they have uh, angina up to 4 years if they have syncope also up to 3 years if they have left ventricular failure pulmonary edema dyspnea and all if they have then 2 years so it is like uh, based on the symptoms you can say the prognosis but anyways you have uh, what do you have management you will manage how will you manage based on the stages how severe it is you know how to grade it as severe right based on that you will manage you will uh, you will try to avoid rheumatic fever you will try to avoid infective and endocarditis right and you will give them ace inhibitors what will this do this is blood pressure control is it okay here they are saying actually you should avoid it in moderate and severe aortic stenosis anyways then you have they are talking about statins they are useful in management of degenerative calcific aortic stenosis but now they are saying that they have not found it to be useful actually okay so now if the valve is having issue right if the valve has issue so what will you do so you will have to uh, they are talking about replacing the valve so let's look at this so they are talking about valve replacement guys so uh, they are talking about what type of valve replacement trans trans catheter valve replacement actually here they are showing you a photo of um, congenital bicuspid aortic valve see here only two cusps are there this is congenital aortic bicuspid valve so this is what they said will be the problem in young people right in old people it will be more like degeneration or uh, calcification so old people will have to show three cusps and you will have to show degeneration or calcification in young people it's something like this where there is bicuspid valve kind of a thing this is congenital aortic stenosis congenital bicuspid va aortic valve that's it people about aortic stenosis just look at uh, this diagram again so if there is ejection systolic murmur aortic stenosis okay crescendo decrescendo fine so uh, another thing here you will talk about is the s2 there will be narrow split s2 single s2 or there can be reverse splitting s2 this is what you should know okay main two things ejection systolic murmur and narrow split s2 or reverse split s2